Hello. Good morning, afternoon, evening. Welcome to 50 Questions Friday for May 27th of 2022. Um, we'll go ahead and take our breath to go into the heart space this morning. So just closing your eyes if you wish, putting your attention to your physical heart, connecting with that heart of the earth. And just breathing in that supporting, grounding energy of the earth up through the feet and into the heart. Next, we connect with source, soul, creator, God, however you see and say that higher power. Breathing in that supporting light into the heart. The third breath to move you into that sacred space of the heart is taking that breath from the earth and from creation at the same time. And as you do, you become that column of light that is grounded, connected, and you are in that heart space. That can be a tough one, especially at this time right now. And, you know, we're kind of all programmed to like the drama drama. So sometimes getting into the heart space is a little bit harder. But anyway, encourage everybody to stop and take the breaths when they can. Um, all right. So uh, 50 questions Friday here where we're live. You're welcome to drop in on the chat side here and check in with everybody. Um, please do drop your questions on the questions tab if you're here live. Um, if you're watching after the fact um, on YouTube, um, we go through and timestamp everything on the YouTube channel. And if you'd like to join us live, just sign up for our newsletter at Twisted Sage. All right. And of course, we got some people from everywhere this morning, Maine, California, North Carolina, Minnesota, South Africa, Colorado, uh, thank you all for being here. Always appreciate the support here when we're live. Um, so we do have some questions from the internet. So we will go ahead and take care of these questions first. And then we will continue on here. <clears throat> Let's see. So our first question from Tara. I put the everything ring in my pillowcase. It seemed to make my dreams dark, not dark like angry, fearful, but literally dark that I couldn't see them clearly. I usually dream very vivid and colorful. My husband commented he was sleeping good. He didn't know about the ring. I enjoy my dreams. So after a couple weeks, I put the ring under the mattress on his side and my vivid dreams came back. Is everything ring keeping my dreams dark so other work can be done and I'm not distracted? Is there another reason why my dreams would be dulled down? So, you know, the everything ring really is a good one to stir everything up for it to be brought forth, to be released. And dream time is, is a huge time for us to do this multidimensional release work. So when we are in dream time um, and you have the vivid dreams, um, you know, it, that's, that's my feeling too, is, is that you answered your question there. I really do feel that too, that it is just knocking everything out so that you're not, um, yeah, so that you get out of the way so that you don't have to be the witness. Because a lot of the times when we're doing our release work in our dream state, um, the mind basically has to reach and, and bring in a representation of what's really happening. Because a lot of the stuff that we are doing out there in that multidimensional space, because we're not releasing just for this lifetime or just as being a human on this planet. We are releasing, you know, cosmically, let's say, um, everything that the soul is. Because right now is such an important time in the evolution of creation, not just humanity or the earth. So anyway, the work that we're doing is is really huge. So a lot of times in dream time where we do so much releasing, and that's why we speak about using the tools during sleep is because we can step out of the way 
and then we're in allowing and the soul is always in charge and then the things can occur so uh, let's see the next question here hello is it fine to put the silver wisdom wand in a water container i wanted to permanently have it in my water bottle okay so the silver wisdom wand um now the silver wisdom wand is made from the wire is fine silver 0.99 percent silver the tube however is a sterling silver which is usually around like a 96 percent um silver and then there's a little bit of copper in it now we usually recommend um to not put sterling silver in the water uh, just as a safety precaution because there is that trace amount of copper in it but truly it's not a big deal that little amount of copper that's in a sterling silver so you can totally put your wisdom wand your silver wisdom wand in your drinking water and be safe um, because the tiniest amount of that trace copper that seeps out is is very negligible now you know the ayurvedics always use copper for thousands of years copper drinking vessels everything else and you know we always recommend not to put copper directly in your drinking water because when you are orally ingesting that the copper leaches into the water then you're orally ingesting that and your body can receive too much copper in your body um now versus wearing copper on your skin where your skin is a smart organ it absorbs as much copper as your body needs and your body needs copper but at some point in time stress dehydration your body cannot process that copper so it turns as a green on the skin because it's no longer absorbing because your skin said nope we're protecting the body we're not going to absorb any more copper because we reached our quota um so when you're orally ingesting that's a whole different story but i really feel that that small amount of sterling silver is very negligible in the amount of copper so yes i think it's a fantastic idea to use um the silver wisdom one or the small silver quantum heart coil pendant i mean that's that's a little one you gotta be careful when you're drinking water with that one but it fits into all water bottles and it creates a larger field as do the wands so i think the wands will be fantastic with the water because um it can transform that water instantly if you put your attention and intention there um, and just look at the 50 questions Friday that we did December 3rd I think with the water ring activation um, and how you bring in that consciousness of water instantly um, to instantly restructure your water so that's another thing that you can do when you drop the wand into the water is to step into the meditation um, that we do and bring that consciousness of water in because that's really the true power and potency um, is that consciousness of water okay so we got a couple more questions here from emails let's see i was wearing my wisdom wand pendant and sitting a few feet away from a new friend she out of the blue mentioned demons and i wondered if my pendant the silver one was possibly canceling out demons or entities from her and her space we were in her house i didn't intend it to do so but wondered if it was acting on clearing on its own without my intention on it so yes when when you have the the wand pendants or any of the pendants in your field especially these wisdom wands are so they're so powerful um, on the transformation of, of all of these things in our field that no longer serve. And so when you are wearing a wisdom wand pendant, your field becomes this transformer. You become that energy transformer yourself, your entire field. So basically, um, yeah, when you, when you interact with people, telephone, in person, um, and when you're in their environment when you are within their field um because you you can be within a person's field physically or energetically you know by phone that's how we do distance healing work um so when you are in somebody's field and you're carrying that transformative energy it is between them and their soul what happens you do not need to have an intention 
when you're working with that wisdom wand or those fields because it's it's more along the lines your intention really in these higher fields is to surrender to allow you know surrender to the soul surrender to the universe and allow all that's in your highest and best to occur and so really that should be the only intentions that we we go into with these new tools like the wisdom wands is just simply allow because um intentions are limited by our perceptions and our beliefs and everything else and so intentions are so limiting for us if we can step out of the way things will be more than what we could imagined those possibilities and potentials are always there um okay so we're going back to so yes totally that wand will do the clearing for people in your field for the environment that you walk into for people that come into your awareness all of that um, let's see uh so here's a question um please suggest which tensor ring to buy for my mother for helping in healing urinary bladder cancer so you know we always see things that go on in the physical especially cancer as usually beginning in the emotional field um so really if you're when you're working with cancer what we've usually suggested are the torus like the the eight inch um cosmic sun disc that torus um you know the the toruses that we create are and that's under sacred geometry on the website that the Taurus um, in the cosmic sun disk the eight inch one is a fantastic one so basically they create a field and they create a moving field and this moving field will help to entrain our energy fields to because when we see any kind of dis-ease or or anything within the body it's just that you're out of balance you're out of harmony um you know healing truly is releasing and rebalancing so the releasing and rebalancing that we would do for like uh a urinary bladder cancer you can simply just wear a pendant and just passively like the you know gosh i cannot say enough good things about you know any of the wisdom wands whether it's the wisdom wand pendant the silver wisdom wand or the full-size wisdom wand or the mini wisdom wand all of these are such fantastic tools as is the taurus but just wearing one of those as a pendant will do the work in your field automatically for that releasing so let's say this bladder cancer is probably something emotional that's stuck in the field that manifests into the physical that's how we see everything in physical working is everything is energy it manifests into the physical when we have something that's disharmonious and discordant we need to release it and usually that is emotions and we hold on to those emotions through lifetimes even and as we hold on to them they solidify and come in as dis-ease so we release it it's just an intention a choice you say okay i release all of that which no longer serves me you have your pendant on or you're in the heart space that we just did in the beginning you don't need the tools you need to be in that space of the heart and connected the tools help do that so you're in that space you're wearing your tool whatever and you just make the intention that well not an intention you make the choice to release that which no longer serves so then once the release happens then the rebalance takes place the rebalance is a part of um, basically once you get rid of this chunk of junk in your field this low dense vibration energy all those emotions that you've held for lifetimes or years or whatever once you release that then your body can come back into balance the easiest quickest way to be in, to come back into balance is just to do that trinity breath that we did earlier and to stay in that space and to just imagine being grounded with the earth connected to creation and hold yourself in that space um that is the fastest way to to rebalance 
your entire system is to be in alignment, grounded, connected. So that's what I would suggest is any of the pendants is great, but I still think the wisdom wands are phenomenal as is the Taurus for clearing some of those dense energies that cancer manifests from. All right, let's see if we had any other questions here. Oh, let's see, I have a question about tensor rings and frequencies. If tensor rings are superconductors, that means that the atoms in the metal stay still and the electrons pass through them smoothly in copper pairing. If that happens, does that mean the frequency is steady? Frequency in electrical current is the rate? Okay. Um, in a superconductor where atoms stay still and electrons pass through them, the direction stays the same. There is no frequency. So basically, the tensor fields, when you create a tensor ring, it is creating a field. There are potentials and possibilities for frequencies within all of the tensor rings. Now, the older rings, like the 144 megahertz, the 177 megahertz, the 188, the 333, the 764, all of these had a measurable frequency within the field. Now, when we move to the smarter rings, like the Galactic Ascension Ring was the first one, and then Harmony and uh, Golden Fire and everything on since then, they all contain the frequencies and properties of all the plant, crystal, mineral kingdoms of the planet. So there is an unfathomable number of frequencies that can come out of this field but it is consciousness that determines your consciousness, your soul, your light, your higher self, that determines what frequencies are for you in the highest and best good at any moment. So when we start to talk about frequencies within the tensor fields, we have rings that do not have any frequencies within them because they are beyond frequency and light they are in the fields of consciousness so that's like the harmonizer ring the harmonizer ring exists in this plane that is all electromagnetics frequency and light and sound and physicality all of that and then you go a little bit higher and you step out of all frequency electromagnetics and you are in the realm of consciousness. So not all rings actually contain frequencies within them because some are, are out of that range simply. And that's just, you know, the newer ones that, that we are creating here at Twisted Sage. So let's see, I think that's all the questions here is well thank you all for sending in questions today all right so we'll go over here to um our questions tab over here all right all right let me turn off my phone so it's not buzzing okay man i hope everybody's doing good it's been a now we're still in a crazy transformative time which is beautiful all right linda well generator cover geopathic stresses such as portals and vortexes yes um so all tensor field generators will work with um th they'll clear all of the geopathic stressors um they'll clear any of that information that's non-beneficial that flows in on electro on geomagnetic lines so all the geomagnetics are cleared within that space um you know if there's any uh, any geomagnetic lines that are not in the highest and best to be there they will also move and shift i mean we've seen we've heard from dowsers where underground rivers will move underground streams can be moved and redirected around a home because an underground river will also create um you know geopathic stress so it's just a geomagnetic 
that comes up. Um, so anyway, yes, any of the tensor field generators will work with geopathic stresses and portal vortexes. Uh, let's see. And so with uh, portal vortexes, basically, if it is a, anytime you have an intersecting in geomagnetic lines, you create a vortex, and that is where every sacred site on the planet is at the intersecting in geomagnetic lines because it creates a vortex of energy which is um, some of these that are a very harmonious vortex is a sacred space. And these vortexes can also be portals. They can be connectors to other spaces, places, times. So yes, the tensor field generator will ensure that that portal vortex is, um, that there's nothing funky coming out of it and that it in itself is beneficial. Uh, let's see. I had some wooden dowels that were about six inches long. They were imitations of some rods of Horus. When someone held them, they became lighter and could be lifted easily by others. Do the rings make someone lighter? Or are you going to make straight rods of Horus? Um, no, you know, I've played with them before, you know, before about the same time I started working with tensor rings, I was playing with those, the, the, the rods that you create with, uh, what is it copper and zinc i don't even remember but those those that you would hold um you know and how they make people lighter and they're easily lifted off the chair you know we used to do that when we were kids light as a feather type thing and you know i've never really looked at it or felt into it but to me i mean it just all seems natural because it's just our intent and us as powerful creators and and we're all getting together when you get two or more people together and everybody's okay light as a feather i feel that is what is happening with those pata rods too is that is just simply um not necessarily the rods. The rods are a tool of your attention and intention. Um, but I don't think it's actually them that's doing the work. It could be, though. Like I said, I never really looked or felt into it. But, yeah, just feeling into it now, it feels like it's it's the people uh, that is doing that and not necessarily it's the specific tool. Um, and the rods of Horus, no, we've... Um, we've played around with a few of the different straight line measurements and you know the straight line frequency measurements that we use are the golden fire and light wands because they're connected to a higher dimensional tool um and i don't know what those those rods of horus i don't know anything about the higher dimensional tool <sighs> well, because i've never looked at it but geez i can feel it now so thank you for the introduction of the energetic aspect of those tools and maybe that is something that will, uh, we won't, but it's something interesting to look at. Um, you know, and that's it too, is that a lot of the technologies that used to be around that are so phenomenal technologies may or may not be in alignment with all the newer energies. And that's one of the reasons that I don't really go backwards to find technologies because, um, we're finding, creating new ones um, that serve us in this here and now because we are in a different time than we were any other time on this planet. Um, Misa, any fun on ideas on how to use a wisdom generator as a radionic machine? I've tried it a few times with great results, but I'm feeling there's so much more it can do. So yes, you know, that is totally it, is that the generators, especially these wisdom generators, um, you can use it as a radionic device because one, it holds your input, it holds your intention, so you can voice your intention into it, or you can have your intention in a crystal and put that crystal inside of it, um, or you can run frequencies into it, like the, the spooky twos or whatever, you can run a frequency inside of there too. Um, so basically, this is the input as well as the output, the transmitter, the antenna. So basically, once you put your input in there, then the output comes out and it just radiates it. So truly, yes, this can totally be a standalone radionics device. 
Now, radionics is simply a quantum field. It's most radionics are done in an AM transmission, um, AM radios. And so the radionics are simply, they, it acts as a carrier wave for us. Radionics is a tool of consciousness. And so, you know, some of the best radionics practitioners, um, you know, like my good friend, Marty Lucas, look up everyday ag. He's, he's phenomenal. Um, Marty's, Marty's out there on the leading edge too. But, um, so anyway, yeah, for, for radionics broadcasters, the tensor field generators work great. Um, the only thing, other things I could say are just trying out different things to broadcast in there, like essential oils, or like I say, you can program your crystals. You can have a crystal with a certain frequency and property and potential that you like and put that in there. And those potentialities and energies are sent out as well. So the tensor field generators are, gosh, they are such a beautiful, phenomenal, simple, easy tool that can really affect, you know, the entire environment. Um, we have hundreds of testimonials that we've either heard or written about about neighborhoods changing like everything changing around people when they put a tensor field generator in their area Marin, i'm having huge problems sleeping an absolute minimum takes a real toll um tried sleeping with the divine i am taurus next to the head and the pendant under the pillow So, you know, that's something maybe, um, let's, let's chat about that one sometime. Cause, um, I, there, I do, f yeah, I'm not sure what it is that I'm feeling or seeing. And I'd like to sit with that one, um, and see, because yeah, I, I can feel that higher vibration that almost like, um, you know, that keeps you up. It's not like quite quite to the anxious level but it, it feels kind of a higher so i'm not sure so yeah let's let's um let, let's have a private chat about that one for sure um i use the harmony generator as a transmitter machine with a large wisdom wand and the alchemy trio and the wings of talk and the cosmic sun disc that's fantastic so you know, there's there's a lot of people who are using those tensor field generators with wisdom wands. I mean, people are there's a lot of people that are doing that, and that does seem to be pretty fantastic. So it seems like you have a really good setup there going. Um, and you know, and that's really it is just to play with the tools to find those combinations that just kind of wow you. And, and hold them there, just leave them there for a while. And then you begin to integrate that energy. Um, you know, so playing with the tools is really, you can, you can create something greater than just the sum. When you start adding different things together, you can create something greater than that whole. So yeah, that we always encourage everybody to play. Uh, Joyce, can energy vampires drain feed on the energy from the pendants? Um, no, so basically, um, hmm, energy vampire, as I call it a, well, some call it a imbalance in consciousness um, in humanity where we just all play this little game of giving and stealing energy from each other, um, you know, and, and that's beyond just your energy vampires. I mean, I'm talking about just everyday life and conversations that you'll notice when people are fishing for energy um and it doesn't have to be that they're taking energy from you it's just that even your attention and having a conversation takes energy you know so um energy vampires if they have if if they had a tool if they had a pendant maybe that would shift everything for them because instead of trying to get energy from outside of yourself they can get energy from themselves. That is the key component that they're missing is that they're missing energy. And so you got energy. I think I'd like some of that. So no, you need to, um, 
you know, for for anybody who is out there, you just simply say no. You know, you just you don't have to tell them no. You can just make the choice yourself and say no. Nope, I don't want that in my field. I'm not going to play that game anymore of giving and taking energy. And um, and when you are balancing the line, you're not doing that either. So the pendant th- itself, if you're wearing the pendant and an energy vampire comes along, you can choose unconsciously to allow them to just take your energy. Or you can set it up and be like, okay, if they're sitting there and they're looking to me for energy, I'm just going to imagine, use my visualization, my imagination from my heart space that this wand pendant is giving them everything that they need so that they can now find their own energy and their own light which is infinite so that's that would be my suggestion to work with um, anybody who tries to feed on the energy because it basically if they try to feed on the energy as your question states if they try to feed on the energy from the pendant that's fantastic because that is their light that is part of what these tools truly are is it is bringing in your light more so which is infinite infinite and abundant and so if you're wearing the pendant and they're draining energy from the pendant it's not your light there they're there that they're connecting to it is their light still that they're connecting to even though you are here this is connecting you to your light somebody else comes into your field they're not connecting and pulling your light they are connecting and pulling their own light um, has anyone had good results with trying to heal uh, i can't pronounce the word psoriatic arthritis so um arthritis we we see as you know arthritis they're finding as a virus it's a field of consciousness um copper itself has healing properties to it it has energetics frequencies if you will that are reducing the swelling of tissue and it is also repelling the virus that usually comes and attacks the hands that arthritis or anywhere in your joints but most of us in our hands i'm not going to say us i'm not there i will i will i choose not to accept that um so anyway, the copper in itself, it was always great for arthritis, but then the tensor fields are reducing the swelling of tissue. Um, they are further working with that consciousness, the, the, um, the field of consciousness of that virus um, and, and helping to shift it into something more beneficial. So as far as, um, yeah, as, far as working with arthritis, any kinds of arthritis, um, yeah, the, 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 the copper, the copper tensor rings are fantastic with that. Um, you know, and every person has varying results in anything that they do because we are all individual and we all are holding something to cause that particular issue. So for each individual, it's a release and a rebalance. And then you come into healing. So every person's going to be very individual with their releasing and their rebalancing. But um, again, these tools are very much holding the space for release and rebalance. So um, anyway, what are the best tools for attachments and psychic attacks? Um, I would say any of the pendants. So for... For energetic attachments, whether it is a ghost or a wayward or a cord or an entity attachment or um, just dark sticky energy or whatever it is that sticks to your field, um, basically any of the pendants is going to help bolster your field. And then from there, it's just a conscious choice of saying no. No, I will not allow cords in my field. No, no attachments for me. Um, you know, it's a conscious choice. When you make that choice, then things start shifting and happening for you. So 
One, any of the pendants is going to help with the energetic attachments. Now, like when we use our practitioner rings, um, it's, it's fun in workshops and wherever you go, um, the practitioner ring, when you run one of those down over you, a lot of people notice those cords just popping because that is really one of the things that's put into any of the tensor rings is to release cords that no longer serve us and actually no cords serve us. I don't care if it's with your child. No energy cords serve us. It's just stealing energy. We can give energy in much cleaner, pure ways by going heart to heart, using that infinity between heart to heart, things like that. There's other ways that you receive energy than cording. So cords are never beneficial. Um, so anyway, the big rings, sometimes we can run one of those big practitioner rings around you and that will clear cords, a lot of the entity attachments, ghost waywards, all of that. So basically, most all of the tools are going to be doing the work. Some of them will override your semi-conscious intention of holding on to something because your soul comes in and does the work. But still, the human has to be the one that says, okay. I allow, I let go. Then you bring that tool into your field and let go. Um, can animals feel the mini ascension coming down the road? We had a deer completely facing us on a road, staring at us. You know, I, uh, oh, and sorry, to go back to this other question too, um, about the psychic attacks. And that's another thing too is, Oh, yes. Um, releasing, releasing all of that. Um, because it is a part of the old way of state giving and stealing energy in the victim perpetrator mode. Now, I know that for me, too, I did all of this work for the past decade or more of, of clearing and releasing. And I was like, oh, God, all this shit's just, you know, it's against my free will. I didn't ask for this. Everything's happening to me, not for me. No, that's total BS. Everything happens for you. This might be happening for you to realize how powerful you truly are and how you can make a choice to no longer choose that path. Um, so for psychic attacks, again, I always hate it when my sister said it's a choice. Everything is a choice, but it truly is. Um, it's a choice to still be playing in that energy. Everything is energy. It is all your energy. All your energy is here to serve you. Whether you feel it's serving you or not, it is serving you in some purpose. Either it is serving you because you like suffering and like all that stuff, which we do because we're programmed as humans, which we can release that as well. Um, or else it is still serving you in some manner. So, um, you know, everything that is that's within your awareness and that's where truly with especially these wisdom wands that you can go into that space and start to release those things that come into your awareness you bring your divine awareness to them and then everything shifts again going back to that december 3rd meditation on 50 questions friday where we go into that zero point of the soul and we start to release um so that's that's for psychic attacks that's what i would say is to just um start to allow them to just no longer be you know and that is the way that we do a lot of that work anymore is, is that when something comes in you don't fight it so let's say you know you got this pain or this dislocation or whatever this is you're not going to fight it you're going to go into the heart space and you're going to look at it and you're going to give it your attention. You're going to recognize it. Okay. It's there. You exist. I allow you to no longer exist and let it go. I tell you, we are that flipping powerful. We truly are. Um, so going back, can animals feel that mini ascension pyramid coming down the road? We had a deer completely facing us on a road. So, you know, when with my vehicle and I actually have an activator glued on the front hood of the vehicle, I've always had an activator as my hood ornament and I carry pyramids all along the dash and everything else. And 
yes, animals can feel this energy, but put your program, it, put your intention in there that you're creating. So you have this sacred space bubble around your vehicle, right? Now then, make that bubble extend everywhere you're going to go. So that bubble follows, it goes in front of you, clearing the way, clearing the space, clearing the deer, all of that. So that's how I use the tools when I'm driving, because yes, the animals can totally feel that. But when you just have that bubble around you, they're going to feel it as you come up to them. So that's why you just put your intention, your program into that field around you that it extends. And then hopefully you won't see the deer. They'll be off to the side. Um, Renard. Hey man. I'm thinking of making an organite pyramid with a quantum heart coil as the cap. Wow, how does that feel? That feels phenomenal. Wow, I like that a lot. I want to make one of those, Renard. I think that's cool. I definitely love to see it when you get it. Um, Natasha. What do you suggest to use for clearing energy in a washing machine onto it? onto its clothes hmm dang i got a new washer here about a year ago and it's been a stinky washer and i can't stand it i keep putting those stinky tablet things in it i need to just start throwing a ring so i'm gonna go home and throw a copper ring in my washer or maybe um in the pocket of clothes, or maybe, maybe I'll just take a copper ring and put it inside of a little cloth bag and just leave it in the washer. I think that's what I'm going to do for my washer. So, um, in what do you suggest for clearing energy in the washing machine when you, for, for it to go on to clothes? So basically, you know, that's very true that there are energies everywhere and that these energies can be picked up onto items and carried. But all it really truly takes is being in the heart space, putting your awareness on there, making the conscious choice that my clothes are always going to be clean and clear of all energies that do not serve me. And it is simple as that. It truly is, you guys. We are so flipping powerful. When we start to recognize energy, so if you're recognizing that energy in that you're recognizing that your clothes are picking up energy that you don't like, go into the heart space, set the intention that you don't want that. Because a lot of us will still, and, and I'm saying us, because yes, me too, I, I still catch myself once in a while, get caught up in the drama of things because it's exciting. It's something happening. So, you know, fighting with energies. Uh, I know so many people who fight with energies, not because they feel like they're doing a good thing. You know, they're doing service to the planet or something, which are really not anyway, fighting anything, but they just, you know, it's, um, yeah, I don't know what to say. Sorry, I'll get my soapbox and I'll stop talking about all that there. Okay, so going back over to chat here to see what's happening. And I think we're almost done for the day here. Hey, Renard, yeah, I really do want to see what you got going with that quantum heart coil pendant. I think that does feel really good, though. Um, and just some hellos from, hey, a few people from Texas and Australia um washington so gosh <sighs> i hope everybody is doing phenomenal um i was trying to think if we have anything else cool that's popping up for twisted sage um we have obviously our silver halos are done now um we have a prototype page for the new energy stuff 
and we'll just keep adding a few things there where you just added a heavy ring. It's like the old one ninth was well, like the old harmony rings or the one in 11 rings that we used to sell all the time. They're a little bit heavier gauge or about an inch and a half or so. Um, so we have one of those in the new energy. It's a really a sweet feeling ring. Um, as are those, gosh, there's another one out there too. Um, I'll have to make sure it's on that page, but there's some of these new, some, some of the tools in this new energy is just so sweet feeling. And, you know, and it's interesting when you hand the tools to people and they're like, oh, this, you know, and they'll start describing it. And, you know, they're just feeling their own light. You know, they're, they're just feeling their own, their own peace. And um, so anyway, and that's kind of where we're at with some of the new tools is we're just putting a few things up on a, on a prototype page. So it's the new energy prototypes is the name of that page. Um, we're doing a bunch of updates to the websites. Um, that's still all, all constantly going to be updated, but Randy, our computer guy, he's on it. He's got some new themes and he's been doing a lot of work there. Um, let's see what else. We officially have a barcode UPC for our cell phone tabs. We're working on packaging. So here soon we will be able to get cell tabs into the stores. And we've been able to get our, our production costs down on the cell tabs enough to where we can actually wholesale those things to, to stores where you buy the package and, you know, and it has all kinds of cool stuff on it. So, you know, and we got these cool little codes now, um, for different things we have the as i mentioned last week we have that emf protection page up and when you go to emf protection there's also there's the product page and then there's the other page and you know i don't like to use the word protection but it what it's what draws people there is because it's what people are looking for so we use the word protection but once you get to those page you will read that we do not you know that's not what we do we're not protecting we are harmonizing energies on just electromagnetic fields we're harmonizing consciousness we're harmonizing emotions we're harmonizing situations that's what we're doing with the consciousness work the sacred space the heart and the tools is we're harmonizing things um so anyway it's really cool to have this study done saying that the cell phone tabs actually protect you from uh, cell phone radiations so now then we can legally say that without getting in trouble we can send people to the the folks who did the study for us so that's exciting we are totally ready to get out mainstream i know that um it seems like here this last part of may all online stores have dropped significantly significantly um our sales have been just horrendous the past couple weeks um man I don't, yeah but i'm just i'm trusting i, I know that we're going to be okay um there's just so much going on in the world right now, you know, and I know some of it, there's a lot of fear going on and, and a lot of unsurety and, and all of that. And so, man, all I can say is just keep shining your light, you guys. Um, you know, when, when we shine light, we, Hey, let's, let's do an exercise. Let's do a meditation. Let's shine our light without an agenda. All right, so you guys ready for a meditation? Let's do this. This is going to be super simple, easy. All right, here we go. Closing your eyes, if you wish. It's easier to go into the heart space. So as you have your eyes closed, imagining the heart of the earth and imagining connecting heart to heart with that beautiful, brilliant goddess of earth, breathing in that light, that energy, that support, up through the feet and into the heart and allow this energy of earth to permeate into every cell. Just allow your cells to dance and to vibrate and to move as every cell is connected with that heart of the earth. Now we're going to go to that part of you, that highest, grandest, part of you, 
your soul, your light, you as a central sun in creation, beyond your imagination, connecting to all that you are and allowing all that you are to come in to your heart, to your body, to every cell and your life. Okay, now we take in that breath from both. Let's bring together you as creator, all of your light and that light of the earth both together. So they're both flowing and connected to each other, creation and the heart of the earth. And you are the conduit. You are that connector point between the earth and creation. As all of that light fills every cell of your being, just allow it to flow. We're not going to direct it. We're not going to radiate it. We're just going to allow it to flow. We're not going to put it onto a situation or a heartache. We're just going to allow it to flow because it has consciousness. It is you and it is going to do what it does without limitations. If you allow, if you allow it to do whatever it does, your light. So this is the space to be in. If you are a meditator and you're just meditating to just be in this space and allow your light to shine not on anything in particular within your mind or mental awareness or your emotional awareness. Those we just want to stay away from because they will limit us. So just be in your light and allow it to do all of the miraculous things that your light can do. And then after some time, maybe hours, days, weeks, you will notice that those things that you really want to work on in your mind or your emotions no longer need worked on because they've been completed in a much higher and better way than you could have imagined. Peter reminds me of benching. This is totally benching. For any of you who do watch the Crimson Circle, there is a free thing every month called the Art of Benching. And that really is what we are doing is we are shining our light, allowing our light to shine into the world, into situations and things as powerful creators that we are and start to shift creation. We know that we are here to begin to uncreate those things in our personal creation that no longer serve us so that we can move forward in creation of something new. Anyway, I'll get off my soapbox again. Love you guys. Thank you for being here. Um, man, have a phenomenal weekend. Uh, here in the U.S., it's the Memorial Day weekend, so we have a three-day weekend. My bike is packed, and I'm going to go jump on. I'm going to wear my halo under my helmet and go do some cruising. So I hope you all enjoy your weekend, too. Um, yeah, all right. So we'll see you again. Um, we're not going to have 50 questions this next Friday. I'm actually going to be gone but we will have 50 questions the following Friday. So, um, yeah, we'll see you next time. All right. Take care, everybody.